Hey, we're here at Independence Creek in the Yukon where the miners just called us because they have found a complete skull deep frozen in the permafrost while monitoring. Monitoring what they're doing here with the water to get the permafrost thawed so they can actually mine. We just arrived on site and Alan Cooper here is trying to dig up this skull out of the frozen soil. How's it going, Alan? Yeah, it's hard work um, because it's so deeply frozen. When you've got a very complex bone like this, uh, getting all of the skull out, you see we're chasing it all the way down here into the frozen ground. It's disappearing under there. This end is out. Uh, Julian's been doing all the chiseling down here, which is why it looks like a Michelangelo. Whoop, stuff coming down. Uh, what we're trying to do, lots of rocks coming down. We've got helmets Watch on, but it's a safety gear. Uh, is to get the uh, frozen material so that we can get really good quality DNA. Uh, to do epigenetics research. So rather than just get the standard ancient DNA, trying to get DNA with small chemical marks on it that tell us which genes are being turned off and on, which we're hoping is going to tell us all about adaptation to climate change and the like. And for that to happen, we need the bones to be in really top shape. So rather than lying out the surface here for a day or two melting, we want to catch it before the DNA is actually damaged by, the, uh, by coming out of the, the fro frozen situation. So you know, 30,000 years or more, it's been deep frozen. We don't want to allow that DNA to go to water and then refreeze it and get it back to the lab. We think that change to getting wet is when a lot of the degradation of the DNA is happening. So we're trying to get it still frozen. 